everybody. Thank you for being with me again. Um, now we've got people from all over the place again, and I truly appreciate you guys being here. We've got Sweden, Ireland, Belize, Australia, Canada, England, of course, all over the uh, U.S. from coast to coast and north to south, and and oh, I see Belgium just popped in. So wow, I really I love you guys, and I appreciate your being here. It's been a great year. Um, We've covered lots of different subjects, which is cool. We did some different things. And based on the signups for this one, I'm, I'm trying to give it about another minute because I know lots of people are still logging in. We had over 450 registrants, and I usually get about 60% of that that show up to the live presentation. Um, so I'm sure we'll get a few more coming. We're almost at 200 now. Um, but based on the response to this, I expect that we will be doing some more of the um, some more webinars on compositing in some different ways because um, you guys really seem to be excited about this as I am um, so and by the way don't forget to get your notes for today if you haven't yet I know a bunch of you already have already grabbed those they're on sale for five bucks in the store um, meredithimages.com slash products or the links in today's blog and it'll be in Thursdays with the follow-up um, from the webinar with the links that you'll get tomorrow um, from Zoom as well. Alrighty, so I'm going to get started. And thank you, Vicki. She, she just grabbed the notes. <laughs> I know a few of you already have today. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you what we're going to end up with and kind of I'm going to show you two images. So let me show you this other one first. So this one kind of was the inspiration for this second one. Come on. There we go. Um, this image um, is actually, the instructions are in my second ebook. So if you have that ebook, you have those instructions already. Um, this was the cover of my first ebook. Um, and this started as and I'm just going to show you this one real quick and we're going to get into some actually bringing some things in. Um, it started as that image, which was a bunch of vultures sitting on a tree in Florida in the middle of the day. So it was very bright and I got this kind of silhouette look. And then we created that with textures and the moon is one that I photographed um, when we were living in Connecticut. It was one of the super moons that we had one night. So from that, when I was deciding on the cover for my second book, I wanted to kind of keep it in that same theme and color scheme. So I came up with this one. And this is going to be our first project. I'm going to walk you through all the steps. Um, so I decided to stick with kind of the same backgrounds and the moon. And I had this really cool owl. Um, and all of these components are things I photographed or textures I created. So it's all my own stuff. <laughs> Phil said that's a hoot. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> that's very cute. <laughs> so yes, this one is going to be a hoot. So <laughs> let's get started. Um, so for this one, let me just I'm gonna adjust my headset a little. Um, we're going to start with a blank file. Now, when I'm showing you these now, obviously, I've spent the time kind of looking for the components and deciding what to put together. So it looks like it goes a lot faster doing it now than when you're originally doing something like this. You're going to spend a lot more time, you know, thinking about things, trying things. When I had originally done this and I had the owl and the moon, it's like, well, I've got this big hole down there. It needed something. So I tried different kinds of things and, um, and I ended up using this cactus that I shot. Um, Marge says, how do I get Hazel screen to show full screen? Um, if you go to your um, Zoom toolbar um, or up in the, you should have it in your version, it should be like a little icon probably in the upper right. You can change the view. Um, yes, you can drag the handle. Um, yeah. It, it actually, if, it, if I'm on the right, there should be like a little arrow. Oh, she got it. Good. 
<laughs> so you can drag that over. Um, but you can also change views, like up in the corner, there's an icon that will let you change different views. Um, so um, again, let's start with a file new. So we're going to start with a blank file. Um, now it's remembering what I did when I was testing this out the other day. And it is kind of an odd size. It's just what I ended up cropping it to. So most likely I started with um, a slightly different proportion, but this is what it ended up as. So we're going to go with that for now. So it's a 15 by a 10.6 inch um, size, 300 DPI, which I always use, RGB color. Um, I usually use 8-bit, but you can use 16 um, if you prefer. Um, and then we're going to start with a white background. And then we're just going to say create. So we're going to start with this. So the first item, and if you guys have watched me before, you know I work with the two monitors, so I'm dragging things from my other screen. Um, so again, because I've done this all before, things are kind of already sized properly. So it's going to make this seem even easier than it really was. So I'm going to bring in the owl first. And you can see with the, the crookedness of the sides, I did rotate this a bit when I first brought it into the original image. And I'm going to do a control T again. And I'm going to drag this handle just a little. It doesn't really matter if the green is there because I'm going to get rid of the background anyway. I just want to make sure the owl is off of the, the bottom. So there's two ways you can get rid of the background. We can either select it and delete it, or we can select it and mask it, which as we know is the preferred way to do it in case you want to make a change. Um, so I am going to use the quick selection tool over here on the left, and I'm going to just use select subject. And it takes a few seconds, and you can see it did a pretty good job, it looks like, of selecting our owl. And I just kind of take a look around, make sure it looks like it got everything, and that looks good. Um, so now all I have to do is I'm on my layer already. I'm just going to click on the add a mask icon down here at the bottom. And there you go. It's just like that. It's masked the island. If I hide the background layer, you see we have a transparent area around the owl. Um, good question, Georgia. And I will show you that with the next image. She says, how do you get the owl in if you don't have a second monitor to drag it to? I will show you that with my next layer here. OK, so we have that in. So next, I want to bring in the mountains that I had there. So if you're not dragging from another monitor, and this is the same if you're doing textures or composites or anything, you would just go File, Open, and you're going to browse to the folder um, where you have it. And composites, and this is our project. And I always like to change the views so I can actually see. And then you would just select what you want to bring in. So you can see these are all the components we're going to be adding. So just double click it. Now the thing is when you bring it in this way, it's not going to automatically add it to your file you're working in. It's going to open it as a separate image. So then you're going to grab your move tool. And again, this is the same as if you were bringing in a texture. Grab that tab, and I like to separate it. And then we're going to grab this image. And if you have something that has transparent pixels, make sure you're grabbing an area that holds color. Otherwise, it won't move it. So we're going to click down here. And I'm just going to click, drag it over my owl image and let go. And then we can close this file. And you can see there is our mountain now on a separate layer. So then you would just have to move it into position. And I want that to be behind our owl, so I'm going to take that layer and move it down. So now we have our mountains. And you can see this is, I think I did some editing to this previously um, to change the color a little bit. Possibly not, but I think I did. <laughs> it was a long time ago I did this one originally. Um, so now I'm going to bring in the moon. 
And again, I'm going to just click. I'm going to drag for my other screen. The advantage of having the second screen is it does automatically put it in here. And it will, if you're doing like a texture, it's going to size it at least in one direction to your image size. So it just saves a little time if you have that option. Obviously, not everybody does. Um, but if you, you do, you can. Um, Phil says, are you able to move the layers in Luminar Neo? I believe we are going to be able to, Phil. I have not gotten a final version yet. I actually have a beta that I need to download. Um, and they just sent me an email today that if you have pre-ordered Neo, I have a link I can share with people to download a beta version. It is not the full version. It does not have all the full functionality yet. Um, but you will be able to play with some of the new features. So look for that in Thursday's blog. Um, Julia says, will this work if you have two windows on the same screen? Yes, that would do the same thing. Yes, you could do that, Julia. Good question. It would just be smaller, but yes, you could definitely do that. Um, so again, now if I had brought this in Originally, I decided on the size and the placement. I knew I wanted it behind the owl. And you can always change these things as you go along. The first time you, you start working with these things, I probably had the moon a little smaller and then decided to make it bigger later on. So, um, you know, you, you just have to work with things as you go. Um, Joey says the Neo is only available for those who are pre-ordered. At this point, yes, it's only... If you've pre-ordered it because it's not coming out until either, from what the email said today, um, it looks like it's being pushed into February at this point because they really want to get it right, um, you know, and get everything set, which is a good thing to not release it too soon. So they're giving you something that you can kind of play around with in the meantime. All right, so that is our moon. And next I'm gonna start building my background a little bit. I brought in the, the cactus a little bit later um, in the next step. So first I'm gonna bring in, so I know I want my texture behind these three elements. So I'm gonna click on the background layer because it will always add a new layer above your active layer. So it just saves you needing to drag it later on. I'm going to bring in the first texture. And this is one I did create. Um, and I'm going to leave this at normal blending mode, 100% opacity. And then I'm bringing in the cactus because this was where I got. And then I'm like, yeah, but I've got this like big space here. So I decided to play around and I ended up with the cactus. So that came in at full size. So we're going to resize it. And of course I need to move that up because I want that in front of the mountain. And then we're gonna move it over here. I did rotate it just to look, cause it looked a little, even though it's got that natural curve, I just uh, decided to move it a little bit make it a little bit bigger and I wanted the arms uh, just above the, the level of the mountain there. And again, you can always tweak things like that as you go along. Okay, let's... Um, yes, this texture is real. Did I put it in my notes? Let me check. Um, I didn't, but I will, I will look. Some of them I did put what set they came from, and I did not put that one in here. Um, I'll put that in the blog for you. Let me jot myself a note. Let's put the link. Um, but yes, um, these are all the ones from, from this project. All the ones I'm using today are, are my own. There are a couple in one of the other projects that are from some discontinued sets, but if you get the notes, then you get the textures. So another good reason to get the notes because you can't buy those anymore. <laughs> I'll let you know which ones those are when we get to it. Okay, so we have our cactus in. So I'm gonna select the cactus layer and I'm gonna add a levels adjustment layer to this cactus because I wanted to darken it down. So I'm gonna click on the le levels. 
and I changed my settings here. And of course, I didn't know these numbers when I did it. I just started dragging sliders. And now I only want that adjustment to affect the cactus and not the mountains or the background. So we're going to clip this layer, this adjustment layer to our cactus. And there's two ways you can do that. It's either the um, keyboard shortcut is Control Alt G, which would be Command Option G on a Mac. Or the other way to do it is if you hold the Alt or Option key and put your cursor between the layers so you get that little square with the arrow and click, it will do the same thing. So you can see that that arrow is here that's telling you this layer is clipped to your layer below it, and that only affects that one layer. Alrighty, so I also wanted to add on top of that a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And, and then we're going to clip that as well. So the hue, I left it zero. The saturation, I went to minus 57. And the lightness to minus four. And then again, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to clip those two together. So now that adjustment, again, is only toning down that cactus, not anything else. All right. So we're going to, I decided I wanted this layer. I'm going to use the same texture on top of these things to kind of blend them together. So there's always going to come a point in a um, composite and compositing where you want to utilize lighting and colors to kind of tie things together so they look more cohesive and not quite so disjointed. Um, and textures are a great way to do that. Or you can use color overlays, but of course, knowing me, you know I want to use textures. <laughs> so I'm going to duplicate this layer with a Control J. And then I'm going to move this under the owl, but above everything else. OK, obviously, it's hiding everything because we have to change our blending mode. So we're going to change that to multiply, and I'm going to leave the opacity at 100%. However, I don't want that moon to be that dark. So I am going to add a mask to the texture layer, and I'm going to select a brush. I'm going to use a hard round brush because I want a sharper um, edge to it. And it worked out to be 1,500 pixels, which normally, you, and I did that just by, you know, putting it over here and, and looking to see what it needed to be. And then I'm going to make my foreground color. I don't want to take all of the texture off. I only want to take like half of it off. So I'm going to select 50% gray. And the number for that is 828282. And you can see there's your cursor over at 50% gray. So that will take off half of the texture. And I'm just going to line this up with my moon and click once. And you can see we have a gray circle. And that's taken half of that texture off of our moon. All right. Um, so next we're going to go to the owl layer. And now I'm going to add some textures on top of everything. So I'm going to bring in the second texture. And this will be in the same set as the first one. And again, I will look that up for you. Um, and we're going to change this blending mode to soft light and the opacity to about 50%. And then we're going to add a brightness adjustment layer and make the brightness 23 and contrast 6. And again, I want that to just affect this texture. Hang on, I'm going to flip my page. <laughs> Reading my own notes. Um, and 
wait, I gotta go back a page. Sorry, I was reading the wrong one. Let's hide that for a minute. We're gonna change that one. <laughs> that was the settings for the next one. This one should be at overlay and 27%. Getting ahead of myself. Need to read my own notes. And then we're gonna bring in a third texture on top of that one. And this is one I use a lot. Um, I created this one years ago. And this one, I don't know, it just works for a lot of things. So I'm gonna, I need to just make sure it's to my edges here. You got critics out there like. Uh... And. Um, we're going to change this to the soft light and the opacity to 50%. And then we'll turn on, that's the adjustment layer I wanted for this layer. Actually, I'm going to use that for everything. We're not going to clip that one. I just wanted to use that to brighten everything up a little bit. And yes, somebody mentioned about the, the owl being lit from the right side, but the cactus is lit from the left side. Um, actually, the cactus is about the same because it is brighter on the right side as well as the owl, so I disagree a little bit um, on that, Don. Um, so that, but that is an important thing to pay attention to when you're using actual photos and not, you know, stock photos or clip art. Um, to pay attention to the different lighting directions because that will make an image look off a bit. Um, for this one, I think this works fine. But again, it, you know, when you're using your own pieces, just pay attention to that for sure. Um, why a black and white moon and not a color moon? That's the color of the moon. That's not a black and white moon. That's the color it came out when I photographed it. Um, the moon is kind of white. It doesn't typically have color. If you wanted to tone it a little, you absolutely could do that. You could come in here and add a, a blank layer. So that's actually a good question. We're going to add a blank layer. Let's choose like a pale yellow out of there. Maybe something a little bit brighter. And we're going to fill that layer with color, which I like to do with an alt backspace on a um, Mac. It would be option delete. And then we can use this layer mask, hold down the alt key, click and drag the mask, and then invert the mask with a control I. So now we've got just a little bit of yellow on top of that moon. You could also lower the opacity if you wanted a little bit less, but you could definitely tone the moon or if you wanted to choose a different color, you could just refill the layer with color. Um, Karen says, will you explain the 1500 pixels to unmask the moon? How did you determine is 1509 the size of 1500? Yeah, that was just happened to be the size of the moon when I was here and I chose a brush when I just kept changing the size, I just looked at it to see what it ended up being and it just happened to be an even number. But you would just play with your brush size till you get it to match that. So it's gonna be you know, different depending, if you make the moon bigger in your image, then it, you just adjust the brush size. Cause you could always come back here, do a control or command T, get a size, say you want the moon a little bit bigger, just blow it up. And then you would have to adjust all of those masks. So this way it's kind of good if you get things in place to the size you think you really want before you start, you know, doing the coloring and masking and stuff. It just will save you time. But there are times when, you know, you could come back here, delete that mask, remask it, you know, it's not that big a deal. Um, moon should be blue because the song is out. Yes, so. We could make a blue moon. Yes, we could. <laughs> so, um, but we're going to move on because it's almost 4.30 already and I've got two more projects for you. I only planned three because I know these are a little more involved. So that's why we definitely, um, you know, can um, do another one of this type of a, a webinar. So.
file close. What did you work with black and white? I don't know what a black and white check layer means. Um, all right, let me go back over to our next one. So what I sometimes do when I'm looking to do a composite is I like to look for pieces that inspire me. If you are on Pinterest, um, let me see if I can find it. I think I saved it. No, nope, maybe I didn't. Um, here it is. I thought I had it saved. If you're on Pinterest, you can follow me, Meredith Images, and I have a board that I call Inspirations. And in here, I have a bunch of things, and I don't try and exactly copy things, but again, they're inspirations. Um, I think you could do something really cool with a you know, photo of a hand, putting a, a pocket watch in it, and doing this kind of a dripping effect. I have used this one um, that I did in a very early webinar last year, uh, my own version. So the one I'm going to use, let's see if I can find it to save time. I actually have it already saved over here in my folder for the day. So I'm going to open it. This was my, we don't need our brush that big. That was my inspiration. And you're going to see how I interpreted that. So I began with an image of, come on, open up. This image of three glasses. Um, this was taken at the NECCC conference a few years ago where they had setups where um, these glasses were on a table and it, they triggered it and it kind of moved on this platform and created these splashes. So I selected this red glass and for time I have I've, some of this already made. Um, made a selection of just the glass. Come on, cancel that, thank you, there we go, um, and so selected that glass, I did flip it so that the water was on the left, and I did that because of the brush I ended up using to create the music notes, and otherwise that was just, you know, an edited version of the cropped glass. So we're going to start with that, and then I added a blank layer below this because I want to have that background area to work with, and I'm going to fill that with white. So we'll just flip our foreground with the X key, and my alt backspace will fill that with white. The reason I like having a white layer on the bottom is so if I have a texture above this and I want to reduce the opacity, I have that solid layer behind it because you can't just have nothing there because then your texture just gets transparent, which isn't what we want. We would want to just be able to reduce, um, you know, the saturation basically of it. So <laughs> Andrea said she took that same image up there, yes. Um, Alrighty, so now I'm going to add a blank layer above the glass, and this is where I'm going to stamp my music notes. Now, I, this is a brush that I found on, it's a site called Brush Easy, B-R-U-S-H-E-E-Z-Y. There's tons of brushes you can get there for free and also for purchase. The free brushes, however, keep in mind are for personal use only. So if you're planning to create something with one of their brushes and you want to be able to sell it or use it in a commercial project, then you need to have a paid version of the brush. And the, um, the website is in the notes because I can't give you the brushes, but I can tell you where to get them because it's not my brush. So I'm going to grab my brush and we're going to go to our brush palette. Let's come down here. And it's in here. Yep, that was this one. And I don't know why they're in Japanese, but I guess the person who created them was. <laughs> um, so this is the brush that I used. And 
let's see. Da, 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 da. So the size I ended up at, again, this is just because I've tested it, was 2200 pixels. And I want, obviously, that's not the angle that I want to create my brush at. So I'm going to come over to my um, brush settings. And if you don't have it docked here, you would just go to Window, Brush Settings to bring up this panel. And I want to rotate this brush to minus 90. Okay, so now you can see it's going to kind of give me the look I was going for to give me something similar to that. And then the color I ended up with was 985D37. And this color I selected from the red of the glass because I wanted to match that. So again, we want it on a separate layer so that we can change the size, rotate it, move it as needed. You want to always make sure your brush opacity is at 100% and your flow is at 100% because you can always reduce it, but you can't make it higher. And then I'm going to try and get this kind of accurate. And again, you know, these things are tough <laughs> to re recreate again, um, but I'm going to click just one time with the brush. Now, obviously, there's some stuff I'm going to want to erase. Um, so let's go to the next page here. What page was that on Pinterest? Just Meredith Images. Um, there's a, a board on Pinterest that's called Inspirations. It's on the lower left of your screen. You just sc scroll down. You're right at the top now. Um, but they have to just follow, go to my page. You can't just go to the board, I don't think. No, no, okay. Dave's going to put the link to that board for Pinterest if you'd like to check it out. Um, so I'm going to create my background first before I do more with my notes. Okay, So I used, again, several of my own textures. And these are the ones that are from the retired sets, but you can get them with the notes. So I'm going to bring in this first one, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. We're going to move it up here, and then we're going to stretch it to cover our image. And then I need to bring it down because I didn't select my background layer. And we're going to leave that at normal and 100%. And then I'm going to bring in a similar texture, but it's blue. I think this one was probably created from the other or vice versa. I don't remember which one I did first. Probably the blue one and then made a black and white. And we are going to leave the blend mode at normal, but I'm going to reduce the opacity to like 52, 53, just to make it a lighter blue, but still have some depth with that black and white behind it. And then I brought in teal one because I wanted a little different shade of blue. And again, these are all trial and error. You're, you're never going to get this at the first shot. I've tried a bunch of different things before I ended up with this. But to give you an idea of how something like this comes together, and then I change this to soft light and reduce the opacity a little bit. OK, so now I thought off the brush tool, that this clear area needed to be more like the background. You needed to be able to see some of that color through here. Um, so what I did, first let's work on this brush a little bit. I just want to get rid of the part over the glass. So I'm going to just use the eraser tool. You can mask it, of course, but I'm just going to do it this way to make it quick for now. And all right, Dave, so there's a question. Let's see. Were the notes in the brush or from pictures? The note, the link to the brush for the notes is in 
my notes that I'm selling. That's not from Pinterest. Um, Pinterest is just the inspiration pieces. And Linda, just to be clear, all of the textures are available. Yes, all of the textures I'm using in all of these projects, along with the images and the act my actual notes are in that $5 package. Just like all of my webinars, I give you everything I use on these so that you can recreate them while you're watching like the replay. Um, so that way you can kind of see it come together right in front of you. So I'm going to grab my quick selection tool and I'm going to make a selection of this clear area of the glass. And now that I have it selected, I'm on that layer. If I do a control or command J, control J is going to copy that selected area onto a separate layer. Um, so what I did was I changed the blending mode of that to color burn or linear burn, linear burn, made it a little bit darker and left the opacity 100%. But you can see by burning it in, it picked up some of that kind of blue color, just darkened it. So it looked a little more natural. Looks like I missed some of the top though, but you get the idea. I want to keep going because I've got another project to show you. Just make sure you make the full selection there. <laughs> All righty. Um, so now to make our music notes stand out a bit, we're going to use layer styles. So I'm going to click on that layer. We're going to double click over in the blank area of that layer to open up the layer styles box. Um, and we are going to change a couple of things here. First, we're going to do a bevel and emboss. And hopefully I remembered my settings, which I did from when I did this the other day when I was testing everything again. So I did a um, direction up, change the size, the softening. It's a smooth outer bevel because I just wanted to give some width and depth to this whole thing. And then the other thing I did was a drop shadow. Hang on one second, I'm gonna flip the page. And this should be a, this is gonna be at 150 degrees because I wanted the light coming from the upper left. Um, normal 22, 13, 45, that's correct. And we'll say okay. And there you go. Um, so that's the basic steps that completed that. So then I wanted to darken the edges a little bit, give it a little bit of a vignette. So I used one of my grunge borders, and this is from the grunge border collection. This one is available on the website. It comes with 12 different borders, and they come both as PNGs and as brushes, because you can do this either way. And we're going to move this up here. And do that. And then we're going to choose a foreground color of four, six, four, three, three, six. And then I'm going to, because I, I don't want black, I want to do that. So now, instead of just doing an alt backspace, I want to keep the transparent areas transparent. So I'm going to hold the shift key and do my alt backspace. On a um, Mac, that would be shift option delete. Obviously, that's too dark. So we are going to change the blending mode to color burn. And I'm going to lower the opacity way down to 25%. So it really just is giving a darkening to the edges more than changing the color. And then... All right, hold on, I'll check the questions in one second. And so that would be that. All right, let's see what we got. Um, 
<laughs> Gerald, I don't see my image. You just need to drag that over to make the work area look larger. Um, that's a Zoom setting. That's not my setting. Um, yes, if you didn't order the notes and you didn't get your spam folder, please uh, check your spam folders. However, if you have a Comcast email, I've noticed lately that if there is an attachment, Comcast likes to just boot things all together. Um, so if you didn't get them and you don't see them in your spam, send me an email and I will send you the link to the notes. Um, right. Sorry, the, yeah, can you narrow the red water so it looks like it goes right in the music notes? Let me show you my finished project and you'll see how I actually adjusted it all. Because like I said, I'm doing this a little quicker. I did play around with it more. And you can see I stretched this so that it did blend with the width of the actual red. I couldn't change the red, but I could change the size of the notes. So I did some manipulation with um, the notes as well by stretching it. So it's, you know, you definitely have to play around with these things. You know, it's not something you're going to do in a five minute project like I'm trying to do now, even though, you know, it's taken 10 or 15. But, um, you know, it, it, just to give you some ideas, because this is all about inspiring you to use your own visions or take inspiration from another piece like I did with this one. So you can see, if I show you this one again, mine really doesn't look like that, but it gave it that inspiration. It, it got me going somewhere along those lines and interpreting it in my own way. Okay. So let's see. Um, thank you, Vicki says she loves the contrasting colors. Um, thank you, thank you. All righty, one more. Let's close this one. Close this one. And let's switch my folder over here. And again, this was one. I'm going to show you my inspiration piece. This also came from Pinterest. And it's a little small just because I did a screenshot of it so it gets a little pixelated. But I thought that was rather cool with a tree and kind of a moon almost more. It looks like a sun once you get these you know, kind of flares going on around it. And I'm like, well, I've got lots of pictures of mountains I can use. So let's get started. So for this one, I started with a new file that's 12 by 12. And we're going to create that again with a white background. <clears throat> And the first thing I did was I brought in this image of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And I did pre-edit this. I did like a sepia look in, I think, in Nick. Um, so what I wanted to do here was that first I need to get rid of this sky. So again, with the quick selection tool, I'm just going to kind of run my brush right over here and then hit the delete key or backspace key and that will get rid of the sky. Control D, deselects it. And then I wanted to move this and I keep changing my grids to inches and they keep changing back and it gets really annoying because I have it marked where I want it to be in inches. <laughs> it keeps giving me pixels. I don't know why. Um, so I'm going to put my cursor right at the top of this mountain because I know how far down I wanted to bring it, only because I've done it before. Um, oops, on the move tool. So I want this to be at about the nine inch mark. So the top of the mountain range is at nine inches. Next, I'm going to bring in a tree and I'll show you the original of the tree. So I did spend a lot of time kind of selecting this out of the background. Um, I started with the magic wand, selected the sky, deleted that, and then, whoops, I didn't unlock the layer. So it would give me a transparent and then kept 
you know, selecting different areas and getting rid of it. Of course, I have one that's already done to save time. Um, so I'm going to bring in the tree that I've finished selecting. And I did also straighten this one a little. So I just, the way, the easy way to straighten is if you just put your cursor outside of that corner air, until it becomes a curved arrow. And then you can just click and drag it. I wanted to straighten it a little bit. And then I'm going to bring this down just so the branches are above the horizon, or yeah, above the horizon of the, the mountain, and the tree is right at the bottom. Let's say OK. And that looks pretty centered. Um, and then I'm going to bring in the moon. So this one I'm going to show you. It's not going to come in the same right size. This is going to be very small compared to my image. And normally I wouldn't enlarge things as much, but it actually worked OK with this. So I'm going to just, it has to go bigger, but I need to bring it behind the tree so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to make this, I want it to be so that it, it spans those branches. The branches are all within the moon. And then I'm going to bring it down just above the top as well. So something about like that. And then we want to bring the mountain in front of that or the moon behind it either way. We only want to see that part of the moon. And then to change the color of the moon, I decided to use a gradient map. And I did a webinar on these a couple of months ago. Um, so up in your adjustment layers, you're going to choose the gradient map. And then we're going to select a color. And this is from one of the sets I have on my website. It's the Sky Gradients 1 set, which is here. And I chose the Sky Warming 1. And then I made a few changes because I wanted it a little darker. It was the color I wanted, but I wanted it darker. So you can change these color stops by dragging them. So if you click in this little box, this is the position. It's like a third of the way into the this bar. And I changed that to 46. So it moved it over and made it darker. And then I changed this stop to 81 to also move it left. So I just got more color out of that. And then we're going to say OK and close that. And again, like we did before, I only want that to affect the moon, not the background. So we're going to do the clipping so it only affects our moon. And then, let's see, I want to do a gradient map on the mountains to darken them. So we're going to go back to the gradient map tool back in here. This one is from my Autumn Splendor gradient set. And I use this dark brown. And I move this middle stop to 57 to darken it a little bit more. And again, I'm only looking at this because we're going to clip it to that layer. the alt key and we're going to clip that so it only affects the mountains and then I above the tree added a brightness and contrast layer and I brought the brightness down to minus 51 Can you answer a question? and then I clip that to the tree and Dave has a question. Yes, dear. Yeah, uh, Mary Miller wants to know. <laughs> How did I select the tree so perfectly? Um, That's her last question for the day. It was just, yeah, kind of as I started. I'll show you again when I get to the end. How's that? Um, let me get through this project and then I'll show you. It was a little time consuming, I will tell you that. <laughs> just to, because I had so much going on in the background. Um, so now I am going to select the background layer to make that active. 
and I'm going to bring in a couple of textures behind everything. So it's behind the moon, behind the tree, behind the mountains. So the first one is painted blue. This is from um, my watercolor painted blues set. And we're going to leave, let's see, we're going to add a brightness adjustment layer to that. And I brought the brightness way down to 74, minus 74, to darken that down. And then I brought in another blue texture. This is from the watercolor cool tones set. And this one I changed the blending mode to multiply and left the opacity at 100%. So I really got a nice rich blue going on there. And then I, above this gradient map for the mountains, I wanted to tone that down even more. So we're going to add a brightness adjustment layer and brought the brightness down to again, minus 50. And then we're going to clip that to this layer because we only want to adjust the mountains. And then my page. Um, Beth asked if my watercolor backgrounds are actual watercolors that you photographed or did you make them in Photoshop? I made them in Photoshop with watercolor brushes. Thank you for asking. So, um, okay, yep, somebody, yeah, okay. So somebody's mentioning they're getting an, it's a, if you have a Mac and you use Safari at the end of October, Safari did some kind of an update that starts telling you that certain sites are not safe or that their certificates are out of date. My site is perfectly secure and my SSL certificates are up to date. Um, I have a, an article on how you can adjust your settings in Safari because it's a Safari Mac thing. It doesn't happen in anything else. Um, so if you have Chrome, a Chrome browser, um, you may want to try that. Um, Joe says she got it on Chrome. Okay, well, it's a Mac thing. Um, but I will, you know, somebody said if she uses Firefox instead, then she can get to the site okay. But I do have an article on how you can fix that because I'm sure at some point it's going to happen to other sites, not just mine. Um, obviously, I'm not the only one in the, <laughs> in the world. I'm sure it's happening too. Um, but I will link that in Thursday's blog too. If, or if you send me an email, I'll send you the link to that article. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing wrong with my site. It's a totally Mac Safari thing. All right, so this is where we're at. Now I wanted to do some of those like kind of flares around the moon. So for this, I loaded two sets of brushes that are by the same artist. And these are free brushes from a site called Deviant Art. And I do have the links in the notes um, because again, I can't give you the brushes. They're called Explosion. They're it's K-R-I-S-T, Christ's Explosion Brush Set. So if you, um, you will have to create a DeviantArt account, but it's free to uh, be able to download them. Um, and let's see. So if you don't know how to download brushes, I'll show you that real quick. So if you, when you're on your brush tool, if you go up and click that down arrow to get to your brush palette, come over to the gear wheel and say Import Brushes. And then you'll go to wherever. This was the ones we used in the first project. Um, over here, business, webinars, too many folders. <laughs> this one, and then we're on this one. And these would be the two set. You have to do them one at a time. You can't import more than one at a time. And you would just click it and say load. And then it would show up at the bottom of your uh, palette. And mine happen to be here because this is where I happen to put them in sooner. Um, so it's, it's set one and set two by the same person. And the way you use these, 
Um, these brushes are designed with some settings already in them to change size and direction as you work. Um, so there's a lot of clicking and then, you know, putting it down a brush and then undoing because you don't like the way it looks. So it's a lot of trial and error when you're doing this and you'll never get it the same way twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a brush and they, they, again, they vary in size, but you can start a little bigger just by, you know, making it larger with your bracket tool. I'm going to select a color. Um, again, I chose it out of the dark part of, of this moon, but I wrote down the number. E89435. So it's kind of this yellowy orange. And then you always want to do your brushes on a separate layer. So we want this to be behind the moon. So I'm going to add the blank layer between the texture and the, the moon layer because we want the brush to be coming out of the moon. And then that's not the right color. It changed. E, eight, nine, four, three, five. And then we would just start clicking and see if we like it and do a few strokes with this brush and you can see how the size of it is changing and then I would try another brush so I would add another layer because you, that way you could um, you know move things around so let's try number two um, let's try that one didn't yeah. one stroke didn't do a whole lot so doing that one there here and it's just again trial and error um now i was wondering what dave was doing he's talking himself but he's he's doing the drawing for a free entry to our virtual creative photography conference and he does a random number generator and then he's just going to go through the list of people online and count down to that number and if you already signed up then you'll get a 39 dollars store credit um so, again, you're going to, um, you know, keep trying, doing brushes. I'm going to open up my finished image. You can see what I ended up with. Oh, these look kind of cool, too. And again, you'll, you'll never get them exactly the same. And this was how it came out when I did it before and with the brushes that I used. And you can see there's, there's a bunch of brushes I tried I didn't really like. You can, you know, turn them on and off. Um, but these were the two layers I ended up using. So again, lots of trial and error going on here. You know, it's not a, a sure, you know, thing. It, it's just, you have to try them. Um, okay. The, you don't get the brushes with the notes, but the link is in there so that you can download them. They are free. I just can't give you the brushes because I don't own them. So I can't distribute somebody else's product, but you can go to the site and it's a free download. Um, and again, with the notes, you get all of the images. So you get the trees, the moons, the, all the things I used, all of the textures that I've used, and, and <clears throat> excuse me, the link to the brushes so you can download them. I just can't give you the actual brushes. Um, Dave is going to post the winner, so don't go anywhere yet, folks. Um, we'll definitely do some more of these composites because I think people really seem to enjoy them today. Um, there's, there's just so much, and these are really very simple ones. And real quick, I'm going to show, I think it was Mary who asked about the tree. Um, again, taking the, I started with the um, magic wand, selected the sky, just make sure your layer is un, unlocked, and I hit delete, and deleted the sky. Then I went in and selected a different area, delete, and control D. And just, you know, this I just all erased, and then worked very carefully. So it's just, it was very tedious, you know, like I said, deleting some of it. I think I didn't keep these branches that were down here. I used these up here and I probably, I think I even just erased right around there. Um, so I did kind of cheat a little bit, but that's how I did that. And then last thing I have, um, and the winner of the entry is Darcy Bird. 
Berg. Sorry. <laughs> so, Darcy, you've won an entry to our um, conference. And if you guys haven't yet, <laughs> all this is, I think I need to watch this a thousand more times. Yes. Yes. It's one that you definitely need to rewatch, um, you know, kind of to get it. So, um, and at the conference, Dave's going to be doing some more of his kind of um, compositions where he uses um, digital art kits. And Shelly Roy, who is also online with us right now, she's going to show you how to create some really cool layouts to showcase your photos um, to use either uh, scrap pages or they can be framed, they can be cards. Um, there's tons of stuff you can do with those. So those are two of our eight speakers that we have for our conference and I did a pre-release last weekend of my creating your own textures course um, had lots of signups already um, um, please come join us it's going to start rolling out late January and it's going to be released over several months but you will get tons of videos as well as written instructions I'm giving away my secrets on how I create my textures, um, both in Photoshop, um, you know, with different art supplies. It's going to be a very involved course, and it's a great bargain at the $89. And that expires on Friday night. So grab that if you're interested, because the price will be going up. Um, thank you again, everybody. I really appreciate you all being here. Um, have a great new year. Let's hope for a super 2022. Um, and stay safe, everybody, and take care and talk to you soon.